Hi, this is Ted Pattison with another video in the Fast Break with Power BI Desktop video series. In this video, we'll look at using binning and grouping in Power BI Desktop. In this video, we're going to look at the new binning and grouping features that were added to Power BI Desktop earlier this year. Now, I have this simple project, single table customers inside the data model. There is a state column, and I want to show you how we can perform grouping on that. There's also a birth date column from which we can calculate age, so we'll have a calculated column to do binning. Now, I have a simple report right here, and currently I can filter with a slicer by year and see how many customers were added to each state each particular year. Now, I'm going to go to the state column. I'm going to right click and create a new group by choosing the new group menu item. I give the group a particular name. Notice for group type, you have a choice of list, so it's not really a choice. String based columns, you only get a choice of one. Now, I'm going to hold down the control key and I'm going to pick a bunch of states from up in New England. And with all those states selected, I'm then going to click on the group button. When I click on the group button, it creates the new group. And then I give the group a name and we'll call that one Yankee States. Now that I've created my first group, let's go ahead and pick uh, a bunch of the southern states. And once I pick the southern states, once again, we'll go ahead and click the group button to create a new group which holds these particular states. With this one, we'll call it Redneck States. Okay, we'll create four groups. So group number three, we'll pick the West Coast States. And once we pick those, we'll go ahead and name that Hippie States. And now my creativity is running dry, so I'll just take the remaining states and we'll just call those other states. So now that we've done that, we've now got this group. Let's go back to our slicer that's currently looking at year and replace the year field with the new sale uh, state region inside there. And now you can see I have the slicer effect to quickly change. Now, once I've created this group, it acts just like a column. Notice that I could go to a particular bar chart and instead of having the access be the state, I can now look at the state group, which is basically going to show me an aggregate roll up for each one of those groups inside there. Behind the scenes, they're really creating a calculated column. Not that you can see or edit the DAX and Power BI desktop, but that's what's being done. Now, in our next example, we're going to create a numeric column. So from birth date, I can calculate the age. The way that we do that is we take the DAX today function and we subtract the customer birth date. That gives me an integer value of the number of days between those two dates. I divide through by 365 and that gives me the amount or the value of the age. Now we want to round down and have a whole number. So we use the floor function and round down to the first significant digit. Now I have a new numeric column age. Now I can perform this binning activity on any numeric field, whether it's a calculated column or a native column. I'm going to right click on that column. I'm going to pick new group and notice that when I create a group on a numeric field, I have the choice of bin or list. Remember with a string column, you only had the list choice. Now, once I've done that, I just pick a bin size. I'll take 10 by default. And what you could see is it takes everyone 40 through 49 and puts them in a bin called 40. Everyone 50 through 59 puts them in a bin 50. So now let's go back up here and let's go ahead and see how we can change things around. So what we're going to do is we're going to switch over to a clustered uh, column chart and then we're going to go ahead and add the age group as a legend. And now you can see that we can start breaking things out by the different bins that they're in. So once again, it just takes a bunch of numeric values and starts putting them all in these equal size bins. Now, once we've done that inside there, let's go back and change the bin size to 20 just to show you can edit it after the fact. We'll go ahead, we'll click OK, and now you can see how the bin size has been updated. Once again, this is Ted Pattison. I'd like to thank you for watching and leave you with a call to action. If you want to join a great, passionate group of smart people, come join us at pbiug.com, the Power BI user group. If you're looking for hands-on training, come visit us at criticalpathtraining.com, home of Power BI Bootcamp and Power BI Developer Bootcamp.